How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another study session. In this one we are going to be learning about hands, human hands that is, and not the muscles of the hands just yet. This video is going to focus on the bones, seeing as we are in the process of covering the anatomy of the entire human skeleton and I'm planning on covering the muscles later. Now, I was quite intimidated when I knew I was at a point in which I had to start studying the hands because they're not only complex, but they are also very important, right? They are a, a vital part of the human body. They are more so like tools that we rely on for most things. And so, like with many of the other bones that we've covered throughout this series so far, we should probably start by discussing the hand's function, right? Because one thing that I've come to understand now is that the structure and form of all of these parts of the human skeleton is a result of their function, right? What do we need them to do? And I can trust that most of you watching already know what the hands do, seeing as you should have some of your own, right? To, to put it simply, they grab and hold things. Now, here in the sketchbook, I'm drawing out the bones of the hand, as well as placing this within the context of the outer surface of the hand. And one of the first things you might notice is the amount of bones and joints that exist in the hand. Now, fortunately, each of these bones are grouped together and the skeleton of the hand can be divided into three sections. I'll take some coloured pencils here and highlight these. At the start of the hand, we have the carpal bones. These meet the radius and as you can see, there's a few of them. Of course, we'll look at this more in depth in a moment. Up from that we have the metacarpal bones, and these are the largest bones in the hand, sitting in the middle, connecting the carpal bones to our last group of bones at the end, known as the phalanges, which you might have guessed, these are the fingers. So these are the three groups of bones that exist in the hand that we'll look at more in depth in this video. And remember, all of these anatomical details will inform how we draw the hand. Here I'm annotating this drawing here so that I can refer to this later. Anyways, let's start by looking at the carpal bones. As I mentioned a moment ago, the carpal bones are the starting point of the hand located in the wrist area stemming from the radius, and these are a set of eight variously shaped bones, each with their own names. Now, of course, you don't have to memorise their names to be able to draw the hand, but for the sake of this study session, I'll go ahead and label them. Now, these are organised into two rows proximal and distal, and if you've watched the episode that I made covering anatomical planes, you'll know that these terms refer to a bone's location in relevance to the centre. They are opposite to each other. Distal refers to distance, and proximal indicates proximity. Anyways, the carpal bones that are proximal are the scaphoid, the lunate, the triquetrum, and finally the pisiform. The distal bones are the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and finally the hamate. Here it is the scaphoid and the lunate that articulates with the radius to form the wrist joint, also known as the radiocarpal joint, and the primary movements of this joint are flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. Here I'll create a little diagram in this sketchbook that shows this. And as we know, it's the radius and the ulna, the forearm, that rotates the hand. So those are the carpal bones. I don't think it's worth looking at each of them in, in any more detail at the moment. Instead, let's move on to the metacarpal bones. The metacarpal bones are the longer bones in the hand, which sit in between the wrist and the fingers. Now there are five of these in our hands, each of them being numbered in association with a digit. Now each metacarpal bone consists of a base, a body and a head. The base meets the carpal bones and the head meets the finger bones which we'll look at in a moment. At the base where these meet the carpal bones there are synovial joints that are referred to as the carpometacarpal joints. Here you can see how I've highlighted this by drawing the red line. This obviously follows the shape of the carpal bones. 
Now, when the hand is relaxed, these metacarpals form an arc-like shape, obviously influencing the position of the fingers as well. What I'm drawing here is an illustration that I found in Sternhaus's anatomy book. If you've been following along with these study sessions, you'll know that this book is consistently a source of information for me, and I highly recommend it for anyone interested in studying anatomy. So the bones of the fingers are referred to as the phalanges, and you may already know we have five of these, with each of them being named in order from one to five, beginning with the thumb. Instead of referring to them as a number though, there's also some common names for these fingers that you might already be familiar with. These are the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and finally the little finger. Now, with the exception of the thumb, each of these fingers, these phalanges, are divided into three bones, each of these referred to as a phalanx, these being the distal phalanx at the tip of the finger, the middle phalanx, and finally the proximal phalanx, the bone at the base of the finger that meets the metacarpals. And so again, here I've colour coded each of these. Now, as for the thumb, you'll notice that it's a, a little bit different. There is no medial phalanx, and we'll talk about the thumb in a moment. At the proximal end of each phalanx, there is the base, and at the distal end is the head. And where each of these phalanxes meet, there are these interphalangeal joints, which are hinge joints, which allow the bones to only bend inwards. Again, if you've watched the episode that I made specifically on the subject of joints, you'll know how hinge joints work. But it's not hard to guess, I mean, it's like a hinge works, hence the name. Another thing to note that might be obvious is that each of these fingers vary in size, with the middle finger being the longest and the little finger being the smallest, but even though each of these vary in size, the ratio in size for each of the phalanxes is roughly the same, and so I'm making a note of that here. Now with the fingers being at different sizes, it also means the position of the interphalangeal joints vary as well, except when our hand is a clenched fist, in which case these joints are aligned. So the reason these finger bones are divided into three bones like this, or why the hand in general is divided into so many bones, is because this is what allows us to clench our fist. We are able to grab and hold and put our hands in suitable positions. However, this wouldn't be possible if it also wasn't for the thumb. Here I'll also draw some close-ups of the thumb on the next page in the sketchbook, and as we noticed earlier, unlike the other fingers, the thumb is only made up of two bones, the distal phalanx and the proximal phalanx, meaning there's less joints and it's also shorter, but that's what makes it strong. And this isn't the only difference when it comes to the thumb, because the carpometacarpal joint is also different, because the articular surface of the proximal end of the phalanx and the trapezium, the carpal bone that it's connected to, these come together and form a saddle joint, which makes movement relatively easy for the thumb. So that's the phalanges, or the finger bones of the hands, and so that covers the three groups of bones that you'll want to remember when drawing hands, which is something we'll be looking at in the next video. We will be applying what we've learned in this one to draw the bones of the hand in various positions. So I hope you look forward to that. With that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.